shrinks, you drive, and it looks like you're going to the line, and it gets reversed. Yeah. Um, that you guys don't let that get in your heads, and you come through with some big defensive stops. So. I think, uh, given the fact that defense is our identity, um, and that's something JV has talked about since day one, and we understand uh, with the background and group of guys that we have, uh, and especially the long switchable unit that we uh, typically kind of put out there when we go small with, you know, Roy Stowe, um, Mikhail, um as premier defenders, obviously, and, and kind of wreaking havoc, that we just got to, you know, fall back on our principles and, you know, get, a, get one more stop. I was just correct, 16 assists for you. Obviously, your shot maybe wasn't on like it usually is tonight. Yeah. Um, how important was that to get everybody else involved, especially early with Kale kind of setting the tone in the first quarter there? Yeah, I mean, I think um, when you look at the way that the, the game is played now, you typically get in the first quarter kind of more like plays. It's a little bit more teams kind of filling each other out, kind of like uh, a jab with boxers. And then the second and third, you kind of get a little more up-tempo. It gets a little sloppier, but you kind of get the transition buckets, the dunks, the, you know, uh, uh, some more turnovers too. Um, and then when it kind of gets in the fourth, you usually get to the matchup basketball, right? Um, where you kind of try to pick out the, the people that you want to attack. And that's usually kind of the stage of the game. Um, obviously, our, our plays are designed uh, to get Mikhail going, as it should be. He's been scoring a phenomenal clip. Um, and then matchup basketball is typically where I excel. Um, and Denver's counter to that was Dublin both the pick and roll and uh, on isolations. And then obviously I have to make the right read from there, which uh, gets the assist versus uh, points. JV said after the game that, you know, every, anytime he sees you wearing the Colorado shirt, you're in this building <laughs> for a game that he knows to trust you, don't stretch, you're gonna be playing your best. Um, what, did, what did it mean to just get this win tonight over a Denver team that's obviously tops in the, top in the West, you know, one of the best teams in the East season? Um, I think it's a great stepping stone for our group, um, obviously. Uh, I won't necessarily call us a young group in terms of age, but but we're a young group in terms of uh, time spent together uh, and, and trying to really uh, uh, gel and coalesce, right? Um, and to do it against a top team is, is, is big time, right? And we understand that you know they're a formidable opponent. We're happy they're in the West. Spencer, what you guys now five wins in your last six games. You're nearly at Milwaukee with you know most of the end of the bench guys. Just what do you think has been the biggest development for you guys in this stretch with all the success? Um, I think it's just guys kind of come together. I think it's uh, uh, been good vibes all the way around. And I think, you know, JV does a great job of keeping us prepared. Um, and it's just testament, uh, especially in that game where, you know, most of the guys uh, or regular rotation guys didn't play and to still be in that game. Um, obviously, credit to Patty, Cam Thomas, those guys uh, scoring a lot of points though, uh, that game. But also, JV just having a, a clear, concise game plan, sticking to our principles, and, and everybody kind of buying in. Did you know that was DeAndre that shoved you right before the game, or was it until you turned around and shot and that look that it was uh, that you figured it out? Uh, because I, I got a couple friends over there, so like Ish, uh, DJ, and, and Jeff Green. So I mean, I figured it was somebody I, I knew. Shoot, actually KCP too, but um, I figured it was friendly fire. I didn't, I didn't think nothing of it. But DJ knows I'll whoop his ass though, so you can tell him that. <laughs> Dorian was uh, shocked when we told him that you told me you had 16 assists. Uh, but he also said that you're part of the group that's been telling him to keep shooting it. What was it like to see him get to his spots and go five and seven from downtown? Oh, big time. Um, actually, when we were in Dallas, yeah, he, had a, he had a pretty good game here, too. Um, you know, when he goes small ball five and, you know, they, they do the trapping, he's just got to be aggressive, man. Um, he shot 40% for a couple years now from three. Um, I know his first couple games in Brooklyn weren't the greatest, but, you know, we had the utmost confidence in him. And the fact that he's surprised, Kinda, kinda throws me off, like, bro. Who you good to probably, like, Thanks, oh yeah, cause like, who you think was passing you the ball, bro? <laughs> <laughs> for that end of the game shot, um, with Jamal not being available for the last quarter and a half, did you guys figure that it was going to Nicola, or did you think maybe they bring in Mike to kind of hit a shot as well, or were you all, always kind of expecting Jokic to hit the ball there? Uh, down two, probably a, a, a Jokic play. I mean, cause that you have you have the entire court to work with. He can go for the win. He can go for the tie. Um, but we still are alert to, you know, Mike and, and all those other guys because they can shoot the ball extremely well as well. And if you over help, obviously you don't want to lose uh, with an open three. Nick had 25 and five. First time his career started eight for eight. You know, just what you made of his, his performance? Oh, man, I mean, he's, he's, been, he's been big time. Um, obviously a, a DPOY candidate. Uh, his activity is uh, big time for us, uh, especially being kind of a smaller group. Especially, uh, you know, lacking some some rebounding, some uh, I guess uh, bulk down there. I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong words. Uh, but but yeah, to see him uh, flourish like that offensively too is is great. And 
you know, we knew again, right? Like he had to be the playmaker uh, in a sense, right? Because if you put two on the ball, I got to hit you in the short roll, and now you got to make that decision. So I know there's a couple uh, that he sprayed out for threes, and then obviously uh, being aggressive, attacking the lane, and, and, and scoring those points. That baseline J surprised you all? For sure, 1,000%. Now, that was the most surprising play of the game. Fuck the assist. He did a one dribble pull up and, <laughs> and made it. Uh, you guys are now 3-1 and one on this road trip as you get ready to close it out. Jock has mentioned about how this team has grown um, game by game on this trip. What have you seen that's impressed you and what's going to be important for you guys to get another victory? Uh, I mean, I would just say uh, sticking to the principles and, and kind of getting a little bit greedy. I mean, obviously, if you look at the road trip as a whole, it's already technically a success, right? But uh, you don't want to kind of rest on that. But at the same time, we don't have the type of guys that uh, think that way. You know what I mean? Like, we've got a lot of guys who um, got out the mud, so to speak. Uh, and I only say that because Dave Ron tried to say he was one of those guys. He was McDonald's All-American, so he was full of shit when he said that. <laughs> but we have a lot of guys that actually did, you know, three stars and unranked guys that have un that understand like you know playing every game and, and showing up and trying to you know just just fight it's kind of going off i mean you guys are pretty much done with the road outside of like three games after tuesday and turning the right direction as the regular season do you let your mind go at all to kind of this keeps snowballing how you guys could look going into the playoffs and whatnot uh, i think it's too soon for that i think we have to take it a game at a time um just because obviously if we if we drop two, you're gonna say that the group isn't uh, playing well together and that we should you know blow it up. So you know you 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 never know. Uh, basketball um, and its fan base are typically a very emotional group. You know, fan is short for fanatic, and uh, you know we we can't get too high or too low. The people in the locker room, um, we we love the great energy, I and mean, we gotta kind of be a little bit deaf to the bad energy. You know what I mean? It's just how to how the NBA goes. Piggybacking on what you said earlier, you know, talking about how. Some of these guys were whatever, three-star recruits or maybe second-round picks or undrafted, whatever. Yeah. They understood the idea that i got to grind and hustle and get exactly. it. Exactly. Um, is there a little element of that also when you have guys that, so many guys that are starting that were just traded? Um, you know, in the back, you might, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think that's, uh, I think what you saw the first couple of games is everybody I think we have a lot of good guys, and sorry, I kind of did a worse out there, but we have a lot of good guys. So I think it was so many people trying to say like, okay, like, what's the role? What are we gonna do? Like, we don't want to be too aggressive, not aggressive enough. Like, we want to kind of fit in, but not overrun this person and like all that stuff. And so, I think we're kind of getting a good blend, uh, understanding how we kind of want to attack the game. Like I even when I answered your question, how the stages of the game kind of go, where guys are gonna get shots within that game. Um, and, and continue to grow and build with that. And like I said, the, the one thing we can hang our hat on is if we do play defense, we give ourselves a shot. You know, if we can hold a team to 105 or so, then like we're going to have a chance to win that game every time, time out, because we're going to generate, you know, enough points. I mean, Mikel's scoring 30 by himself. So, you know, we're we going we gonna to have a puncher's chance every night with any team. But well, when you have four starters that I'm saying were just traded, whatever, three weeks ago, yeah. whatever, what, does that put an added chip on the shoulder? Um, I think the trades were realistic, so we're not like mad at Dallas and you know uh, Phoenix for making the trades. I mean, we understand how it kind of works. I think, like I said, it's it's guys wanting to win, and you have four guys in the trade, but obviously a whole team of guys that understand uh, what it is to fight, and then also have just kind of that winning mentality. And, and if you come into each and every game, you approach it like, "Hey, I'm trying to win the game." Um, I, I think I was answering one of your questions. Uh, two games ago or so when I said, you know, sometimes I shoot when I should pass, sometimes I pass when I should shoot. Like, but overall, like, I'm trying to win the game. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going out there trying to get 30. You know what I'm saying? Or or, or whatever it is. Like, if they blitz me and double team me, boom, I'm going to pass it, right? If they're going to single coverage, I might shoot a little bit more that game. But everybody kind of has that mentality of, like, what do I need to do to win? And if, if the group takes on that identity, along with playing defense, we have a chance. You know what I mean? Like, if, if people were out there kind of doing their own thing, you would see it and we'd be a really fractured group and, you know, it would just, it, it would, it, you would sense it as a fan. You know what I'm saying? It would, it would be showcase basketball. It wouldn't be a team trying to figure out how to win. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to have our ups and downs, but overall we're trying to figure it out and go in the right direction. Last minutes. No